Why should you play Black Desert Online? I mean, it's just one in many MMOs out there. Just like there's lots of RPGs out there. And action games. And simulation games. And management games. And farming games. But there's not a lot of games that are basically all of those things wrapped into one. And frankly, that's what Black Desert Online is. Today I'm going to be here to talk about why I think you should play Black Desert Online, or why you shouldn't, depending on what it is that you're looking for in a game. I want to start off by talking about some of the main talking points and features of this game that I've experienced so far. I've put in about 30 hours, and I'm sitting around level 25 or so right now, but there's still much of the game that I haven't seen. The soft cap is level 50, PvP doesn't start till 45, and there's also this whole naval section in which we're building boats and going out to remote islands to collect rare resources. That's all stuff I haven't even touched, but I'm already completely enamored. So let's talk a little bit about Black Desert Online. First of all, what is it? Well, simply put, it is a massive open world sandbox MMORPG. I don't think I've seen a single loading screen except for when I logged into my character. You move from one end of the world to the other, engaging with various NPCs, attacking enemies, and encountering other players. But what I want to focus on are the various features of this game. Starting from the top, the most important thing for me, you guys know, it's combat, it's the gameplay. And boy, <laughs> this is really good. Like, really, really good. I've talked to a few friends of mine who played the game, and all of them pretty much unanimously agree. This is one of the best combat systems in an MMO to date. Now, ugh, claims are being made. We need to substantiate these. You're looking at the gameplay, and you might just be thinking, that just looks like any old action combat MMO. And I've played plenty of those. You know, I played Terra. I played Sinvicta. What is the name? Sinvictus? There's some game that's kind of like Sinvicta. <laughs> I've played any sorts of action MMOs. But the reason I think this one is different is because of the steps necessary to perform the things that you're seeing on screen. It's not that I'm just clicking one button and performing in a move. Hotkeys exist, but this game highly incentivizes through reduced costs and increased effect using comboed multiple inputs to perform your actions and then with those multiple inputs for single actions doing combos of one after the other to get additional benefit basically this plays like a fighting game i heard someone refer to it as the mmo version of like tekken so here's an example here's one of the combos i can perform forward or backwards an f which is going to push an enemy away i can then do forward right click which will basically blink me to the target performing multiple attacks I can then do F for a low kick F again for a high kick <laughs> and then back and right click for an uppercut finisher I am not kidding you those are the keystrokes to to do some of what you're seeing right here in the background and that's just one combo one sort of chain of abilities that I'm doing to perform an action one of my most common things that I'll be doing when I'm farming up enemies is I'll be doing I'll be doing forward jump and shift this is my forward blinking ability so I'll be do doing forward spacebar shift and then I'm rounding up enemies and then once I circle them around I'm gonna be doing back F to push and then I'm gonna be doing back right click hold down right click spam left click for darkness wave it's just like and you, you have to understand, the way it feels to play this game is so ultra-satisfying. The combat immediately blew me away. That is the thing that first drew me to the game. Because when I first got in here, you know, I, I just, there were so much, there's so many systems. I was completely inundated, and I'm like, I don't know if I really want to get into this. There's a hell of a lot going on. But then after the combat hooked me, I stayed long enough to actually start to understand and get some of the depth to everything else that this game is. This game is not just a combat MMO. So there's fighting, you're gonna be fighting tons of enemies, collecting items to turn in for lots of money, getting some gear, upgrading that gear to various levels, and, and the combat alone is enough to, I think, enjoy this game. And you can play this game just with combat. But wait, 
there's more. <laughs> this is just like a sales pitch. It's not what this is. I'm just trying to share this game with you guys. So there's professions. There is a wide variety of professions. Specifically, gathering, processing, cooking, alchemy, training, fishing, hunting, and trading. All of these things can be leveled up individually as you do them. So I, for example, have focused on cooking because I'd like to make good food to increase my character stats. What I had to do was f get ingredients, throw them into a pot in my house, which we'll get to housing later, and then s mix them together to discover a recipe. You don't find recipes in the game per se. They're all listed online, which you can look, and there's also wikis in the game, like help guides that you can access. But yes, there's recipes where you, you get ingredients in the world, and most of the time how it works out is one ingredient will be farmable. So either I go outside and I kill a chicken and I collect its meat. Or I, I, I harvest a plant for its berries. Or potatoes. Or I chop down a tree. Or I mine some rocks. You know, all the traditional things that you do in these types of games. All the gathering things. And then you take that found ingredient in the world. You combine it with some ingredients that you get from cooks in towns. And then you make combine that to make your, make your food. Make some beer for my workers. We'll get to workers in a second. But there's a wide variety of professions. All of them have a bunch of depth. And there's a lot of leveling to do there. And this game is very grindy. I talked about how we're going to mention some of the good and the bad. This game is a huge grind but that also means it's got stuff to do for a long time so if you're looking for one game that can keep you occupied for a long period of time this certainly appears to be one of those now I want to talk about some of the management and farming sort of things I mean I know we talked about professions but towns and nodes and workers so towns there's a variety of towns in the game right now and they're filled with all manner of NPCs you've got your blacksmiths You've got your, your worker managers, you've got your stable masters for your horse, which we'll talk about horses in a second, and a, a whole bunch of things. Quest things, of course, NPCs of interest. Now, when you're talking to various NPCs, you acquire knowledge, and that knowledge is basically put into a database that informs future NPCs of what you know and then what they can provide to you. So NPCs, some, some NPCs in the game will basically have requirements that you have a certain amount of knowledge to get a quest from them. Or maybe they've got a special potion for you. There's this whole amity system in which you engage in conversation based on the knowledge that you've had, what you've experienced in the world, and that will determine, depending on what you know, how successful your conversation with them is, and then what they can do for you as a result. Like the stable master. If I become really friendly with him because I've got knowledge of things that he's interested in, he's going to give me, uh, sell me perks for my mount. The, the horses you can find in the wild, you can tame them, you can bring them back, you can breed the horses. They'll level up. They've got their own stats, they're the things that they're good at, things that they're bad at. It's just so much depth to this game. It's almost insane. So yes, the towns have NPCs and things like that. There's also town housing in which you can place down stuff inside of your house, like uh, a cooking station, or a bed, or a chair, and a table. Cosmetic things, but things that are also useful. You can also make storage to increase the storage available to you in that specific town, and lodging for workers. Now, what are workers? Well, workers are NPCs that you can hire to basically perform gathering tasks for you. All throughout the world, there are farms and other locations of interest that are basically nodes, and they will have a node manager. Now, once you've spoken to the node manager and contributed to the node, then you're able to gather from it with workers. So you hire workers, you give them lodging in a town, they live in that town, and then you tell them, I want you to gather from this node that we've contributed to. They will then actually physically go out. These are real NPCs. They will physically leave their lodging and walk to that node that you've told them to gather, gather resources, then bring it back to that town. So the next time you go back to that town, they will have those resources for you. Whether or not you want them to gather potatoes or grapes or chop down trees or harvest uh, rocks. <laughs> It's just, it's really even hard for me. I'm just trying to list off the things that I know and that I've seen in this game. And I'm not even going fully in depth to this. There are so many systems and so much going on. And as you connect to those nodes, as you contribute to those nodes and you connect them across the entire map, you can then set up trade routes. 
where you move materials from one end of the map all the way to the other, and you sell it at the other end, and the further distance you sell it, the more you get for it. There's just so much going on. There is so much depth to this game. And it all comes... It, and all of that is in addition to how much fun I think it is just to engage in combat. As much as I love the combat, I've spent more time in the other systems because there's so much else to do. Now, I do want to talk about some of the things that this game doesn't have or that it has that might not be good. Number one is the game is insanely grindy. But I've talked about this in the past and how that's not necessarily a bad thing and hear me out here because grind is always used in negative connotation and I'm not going to go too into depth I did an entire video on this you can YouTube it if you want it's called the grind but basically the notion here in my mind I've kind of come around on this idea is that all games will eventually have an end and if you want to prolong the life of the game if there's a game that you like and you want to keep playing you actually want some sort of a grind because there will never be infinite story content. There will never be infinite dungeons or infinite new bosses. The only thing that can produce something like that is procedural generation. And while that is certainly valuable in some games, it doesn't make sense in every game. And it also is never unique because it's procedural. I mean, it is unique, but it's not special, I guess I would say. Anytime I played a procedural generation game, when I go through that aspect of the game that is procedural, it's always forgettable because it wasn't handcrafted. And it's not special. But yes, if there's games you enjoy and you want to keep playing, grinding provides you an avenue to do that. Whether or not you're grinding mobs, grinding reputation, grinding up gear, whatever. So I don't think grinding is a bad thing. I think it just depends on if you enjoy playing the game in the first place and there's things that you want to continuously do. But yes, this game is grindy. You will be grinding up your levels on all of your professions. You will be grinding up contribution points so that you can connect nodes to do this trading. You will be grinding up your gear. Gear is levelable, essentially upgradable, if you will. In fact, there isn't even a level cap. There's a soft, soft level cap of 50 and then another softer cap at 60 or something like that. And then it gets basically insanely hard to level up from there. But there's a the no actual level cap to this game. People will grind forever and they will eventually get higher and higher levels. And the same thing kind of goes for, like, some of these professions. There might be a cap. I don't know personally. Again, I've only played 30 hours, which is not much for an MMO. But as far as I tell, there is an insane amount of grind and progression there. So if you just don't want any of that, this might not be the game for you. But if you play the game and you like the game, then you'll probably enjoy the fact that there's things to continuously do. I think the second thing that's going to be a huge bummer for some people, and I kind of wish this was here as well, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the game, there's no traditional end game PVE. There's no dungeons or raids. What the end game for this game is, is again continuing to do that grind, fighting off waves of waves of enemies. PVP, which we're not touching on too much in this video because I haven't seen it yet, but there's open world PVP and there's guild vs guild massive scale PVP with mounted combat, engaging in big open fields and taking over control of cities which I believe then you can tax people who use those cities. So if I go through a city and a guild owns it and there's a tax on there, if I'm, I guess, interacting with their goods, I got to pay extra money. Something like that. I don't know. So the end game grind, continuing to level your professions and no traditional PvE, I think might be a huge negative for some people. There is also a cash shop in this game, but from what I understand, it's, it's pretty benign. It's mostly cosmetic stuff. You can buy fancy lingerie or nice looking costumes or, or pets but nothing that's pay to win from what I've been informed. From what I've been informed. I haven't looked into it too in depth yet. But anyways, ultimately, the way I feel about this game from what I've played is it feels like a single player RPG with an intense amount of systems in it, things to do, that also happens to be an MMO. I mean, look at how good this game looks. It is gorgeous. The fact that you can mantle up onto rocks and buildings alone in an MMO is impressive to me. This game has lots of little things that I think make it an overall incredibly satisfying experience. You, music changes when you go on your mount. 
your 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 pet will rest on your shoulder when you're standing still. If you go AFK, the camera goes into cinematic mode and takes various like interesting looking shots with with vi like visual filters on it. Like there's just uh, honest to god to me this is like this is the Elder Scrolls MMO. This is like Witcher the MMO. This is like so many single player RPGs with all the depth and the systems and how good the combat is. But also in MMO form with engaging with other players in PvP. And I didn't even talk about there's naval stuff too. There's just too much to this game. There's way too much going on. And I think it's fantastic. I, <laughs> I'm, I plan on playing The Division next week. But I don't know for how long. Because this thing's really sucked me in. Big time. And that is why I think you should play Black Desert Online. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know there's a lot of rambling. I covered what I know. I covered what I could and <laughs> what I'm knowledgeable of. But there's so much more depth that I just barely scratched the surface of in this video. If you're even vaguely interested in what I talked about, this is probably a game that you should give a look. All right, guys. That is going to do it for me here today. Thank you once again so much for watching. Hope you have a fantastic afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.